Hello, I'm Atu Jamir and you're watching Hornbill TV Prime at 9, now news in details. The Supertech Twin Towers in Noida were demolished on Sunday, ending a nine-year-long legal battle. The nearly 100-meter-high structures taller than Delhi's iconic Kutub Minar, 73 meters, were brought to the ground in nine seconds like a house of cards by the waterfall implosion technique. In a breathtaking spectacle of modern-day engineering, over 3,500 kg explosives was used to bring down the 100-meter tall structures born out of corruption and perseverance of a Supreme Court order that found their construction within the Emerald Court Society premises in violation of norms. Yes, a victory and and victory against all these atrocities. और ये बहुत अच्छा है इंडिया में एक एग्जांपल मिला सबसे खुशी की बात है कि अभी मैसेज आया है कि नो कोलेट्रल डैमेज अब हम लोग साइड पर जा रहे हैं ठीक है नो कोलेट्रल डैमेज सारी बिल्डिंग हमारी इंटैक्ट है सारी बिल्डिंग्स इंटैक्ट है सिर्फ जो टूटनी थी सिर्फ जो टूटनी थी वही टूटी है बस नरेश नरेश के साथ यही सोसाइटी टास्क फोर्स के अब कुछ नहीं अब जो होना था बेस्ट हुआ है सक्सेसफुल हुआ है एवरीथिंग इज फाइन थैंक यू The Noida authority said that 28,000 metric ton of construction will be generated out of this demolition and it will be treated at the Sector 80 treatment plant. Residents expressed mixed reactions towards the demolition order of the Supreme Court that termed the construction of Twin Towers illegal as they were built in violation of building regulations. According to Supertech Limited, it invested Rs 25 crore in land buying for this project and another Rs 25 crore was invested in the obtainment of layout sanctions as one has to pay the approval cost to the Noida Authority. The realtor bought this 8,000 square meters of land for Apex and CN in 2009 along with other land parcels of 46,000 square meters on which Emerald Court's 11 residential towers were standing. It took the realtor five years to build these 202 and 97 meters tall towers before the Allahabad High Court first ordered demolition in 2014 for violations of building regulations. With just six months left for polls, Bharatiya Janata Party is revamping itself in Tripura. PJP National President J.P. Nada landed in Nagartala on Sunday, beginning his two-day Tripura visit. During his stay, Nada is scheduled to take stock of the party affairs and meet party leaders and allies, apart from addressing a public meeting at the state's tribal council and attending other programs. On his arrival, Nada was received at the Agartala airport by Chief Minister Dr. Manik Shaha, Deputy Chief Minister Jishnu Dev Varma, former Chief Minister Biblap Kumar Dev and other PJP leaders. After Assam and Manipur, Tripura is the third northeast state where the PJP will try to repeat its government, keeping on with its victory streak in this part of the country. <laughs> The 
BJP chief also visited Agartala, Burbacha, Tripura's handloom and handcrafts and said he was very happy to come to Tripura. Nada later held meeting with legislators, party and functionaries at Agartala State Guest House. Nada will address a public rally at Kumlyong, headquarters of the Tribal Autonomous District Council, 12 kilometers east of Agartala on August 29. The Congress Working Committee, CWC, announced a revised schedule for its long-awaited election for the party president on Sunday. The polling will take place on October 17 and the results will be announced on October 19. Party leaders suggested that it is unlikely that a number of candidates will be in the fray. The party high command is keen to see Rajasthan Chief Minister Sajok Galot take charge of the party as the next president. CWC approved the final schedule of dates suggested by the Central Election Authority of the All India Congress Committee for election to the post of Congress President in a meeting on Sunday. The date of notification is September 22 and candidates can file their nomination between September 24 and 30. The last date of withdrawal will be October 8. The CWC also reiterated its resolve to make the Mahangai Parhala Bol Rally in New Delhi on September 4 and the launch of Bara Joro Yatra for Kanyakumari from Kanyakumari on September 7 and its continuation thereafter a resounding success. For the past three years, Sonia Gandhi has been in charge as the interim president after Rahul Gandhi stepped down as a party chief following the poll debacle in 2019. The CWC last year decided that elections for block committees and one member each of the state congress units will be held from April 16 to May 31st. District committee chiefs will be elected between June 1 and July 20. State chiefs and AICC members between July 21 and August 20. And AICC president between August 21 and September 20. With regards to the anti-incubancy rumours hitting the state PJP unit of Nagaland, Munlo Mokikon dismissed the rumours and expressed confidence on the party and its members for the upcoming assembly elections. Both PJP and NDPP reached a seed-sharing agreement ahead of the Nagaland Legislative Assembly elections in 2018, with the NDPP contesting 40 seats and the PJP contesting 20. The state PJP unit is leaving no stone unturned to continue its winning streak in the northeastern state with the PJP and Nagaland Chief Minister Nipirio at led Nationalist Democratic Progressive Party going ahead with a seat sharing plan in the ratio of 40 by 20. PJP National General Secretary B.L. Santosh, who is on an official visit to the state of Nagaland, reviewed the poll preparations and accordingly sounded the poll bugle. Like any other society in India, people of Nagaland also discuss and express lots of concerns on lack of civic sense. However, most people do not care much. We all love to keep our homes clean and beautiful, but it is a common sight in every place in Nagaland of people throwing garbage or littering public places. In the recently concluded Nagaland Olympic and Paralympic Games, the meaning of civic sense had gone down the drain. Post-event, the Indira Gandhi Stadium Kohima wore a messy look with litters and trashes, with no sense of social responsibility. The spectators left the stadium in filthy state and the Lepec District Sports Association team took up initiative to clean it up. You are watching Hornbill TV. I'm Yandini. Today I'm going to highlight on the recent mass which was uncivilizedly scattered around IG Stadium Kohima on the recently concluded second Nagaland Olympic and Paralympic Games. Well, you can watch the mess. This simply shows the lack of public, basic public behavior among us. And question is if we are ever going to change. But thanks to the thoughtful action, the Pat District's Sports Association has voluntarily cleaned the mess. 
Pack District team swept the West, which was scattered in the stadium like chips wrappers, alcohol cans, and water bottles, etc. One can say that the cleanliness drive drew the attention of many, not just that, even a Chief Minister Nipirio, in his speech at the closing ceremony on August 27, Rio appreciated the PAC district team for the work by saying that it will go a long way and set a good example to our people. So with this, let's all learn that as a good citizen, we should know the responsibility to keep our society, also our surroundings, clean and green. We'll take a short break, keep watching. Ringing the poll buggle, the National People's Party is gearing up for the upcoming polls in Meghalaya, Tripura and Nagaland. Chairing the National Committee meeting on Saturday at Constitution of India Club New Delhi, NPP Chief Konrad K. Sangma said that NPP will go for polls alone and will not forge any alliance with PJP or any other political parties. On TMC's entry in Meghalaya, Konrad K. Sangma said TMC had entered Meghalaya and is trying to create noise, but it is not simple that by massive publicity they would make any impact. During the National Committee meeting, the decision to form different committees to further strengthen the party and activities were talked out. The meeting was chaired by NPP Chief Konrad K. Sangma along with other leaders of the party. The meeting was attended by members of the National Committee and presidents of different states units. During the meeting, NPP talked out strategy for the upcoming elections in the state of Meghalaya, Tripura and Nagaland. Transitions and transformations take place all the time, so it's nothing new. And uh, the relationship between uh, BJP and the other political parties is something that uh, I don't feel I should comment on because those are understandings between them. But as I said, from our point of view, we have maintained two simple principles. The first principle is that when we fight an election, we fight on our own because it's about the identity and the ideology of the party, which we tell the people about and we expect that people will vote for us. And the second ideology which we have mentioned in the past is that we have normally worked with the NDA in all areas. And uh, that has been the kind of uh, principle that we have followed. And this has been something that uh, even our leader, our founding leader, Dave P. S. Sangha, who had always supported the NDA. SM Chief Minister Manta Biswa Sarma took a swipe at Delhi CM Arvind Kejwal, reminding him of his unfulfilled promises of giving Delhi a London or Paris-like makeover. He also reminded that Delhi CM is comparing the national capital with smaller cities. Because of this, Sarma, taking a swipe at Kejwal, also pointed out that Delhi CM has expressed his desire to visit SM. Only now, not when the stage going through a crisis such as floods. The two chief ministers had been engaging in verbal duels on Twitter over the last few days. Each of them asking the other to visit their state and witness the development work undertaken there. The spat started after a casual in response to a news item that claimed the Sam government closed 34 schools due to poor results said shutting down the institutes was no solution. Implying that Kejwal has failed to meet his poll promise, Sarma added, When you could not do anything, then you started comparing Delhi with smaller cities of Assam and Northeast. Sarma went on to claim that if PJP came to power in a city like Delhi, the Saffron Party will make it the most prosperous city in the world. In another tweet, over reports claiming that Kejwal is willing to visit the Northeastern state, the Assam CM wrote, I'm sad and sorry that you did not have such a desire when the people of Assam were battling natural calamities like floods. And yes, invitation has already been sent to your Deputy Chief Minister. At M. Sisodiaji, 
from Assam, the PJP leader added. Sama was apparently making a reference to the summon sent by a local court here to Manish Sisodia, asking him to appear before it on September 29 in a criminal defamation case filed by the Assam Chief Minister against the Delhi Deputy CM. About 50 participants turned up for the Miss Manipur audition at Hotel Imphal on Sunday. Contestants from different backgrounds like Nagas, Kuki, Mitya, Muslims and Nepali girls have turned up. The winner will be given 1 lakh cash prize. First runners-up will have rupees 70,000 and second runners-up rupees 50,000. Talking to Onreal TV, Director of Organizing Committee Haley Lithyang Pam informed that the grand finale will be held on 11 September at Lamboy Kongang Kong, Manipur Trade and Expo Center in Imphal West. Lithyang Pam said most of the judges are former winners and runners up. He said biggest challenge in organizing such beauty pageant is the conservative nature of the society. 11 September, Sunday at Lamboy Kong Nang Kong, Manipur Trade and Expo Center. Since our organization have been running very genuinely, uh, we have been, you know, proving and uh, we have been proof enough, like you know, like uh, there's no partiality uh, while choosing the winner of today's contest, like for Miss Manipur. So, uh, hmm. uh, uh, all kind of community must be participating. Yes, Tangkul, the... Naga, all uh, cookies, like you know, the Nepal, even one Muslim lady is there, I think, I believe. We have got a, you know, uh, uh, we have got. One, one Muslim lady, she, she took a form. I'm not sure if she is there or not today. So, what are the ex uh, excitement level? How many contestants have been in the so far? Uh, more than 50. Like, yeah, the excitement level is in a different level. <laughs> uh, how much do you expect? You know, uh, we expect at least, at least approximately 20, 25. Like, we are planning to recruit, uh, we are planning to finalize, uh, we, we, are plan we are planning to recruit 20, 25 girls, but we are not very sure. If they are not, uh, qualified enough, then you know, we may reduce to 15 also. Like, we uh, don't have any specific number of candidates for the finalists. Uh, uh, lastly, what are your expectations from the general public? General public, we are expecting love and support. Then we are expecting them uh, to understand uh, uh, the quality of the present. Because, uh, see, to, to, to be very honest, like we are very proud uh, to organize such a uh, prestigious and very. This is Miss Manipur is the oldest, oldest pageant happening in Manipur. So we are, we are expecting their love and support and we want them to come and enjoy and to make this event a very successful one on 11 September. On Sunday, August 28, the Assam police took a good initiative for the third grade candidates at Nomati Exam Center in Gohati. Nomati Police Station, led by Nilat Pal Deka, ACP Gohati, organized the program and gave a pen and chocolate to all the candidates for encouraging them before the exam. The first phase for Class 3 position recruitment drive was held on August 21st. Second phase was held today and last phase is scheduled for September 11. Ami, I mean, I'm going to go to the Columbus. 
তাতে সাহসার উৎসাহ যোগাইছো এটা এই পরীক্ষা সিহতে সফলতার উত্তীর্ণ হব পড়ে এইখিনি আর নুনমাটি অঞ্চল কেবাখানো বিদ্যালয় আছে কোন ধরনের নিরাপত্তা বা তেনে ভতন ব্যবস্থা অতি কটকটিয়া নিরাপত্তা ব্যবস্থা আমাদের দেখা নিকুল ব্যবস্থা ঠিকই থাকে চলি আছে যাতে সকল পরীক্ষা ওপর আমার দেখিছে পুলিশনা ঠিকই থাকে কাম করি আছে Teja Vizovenu and Lumvila Sangtam won Miss and Miss India Globe 2022 season 9. The announcement was made on August 27 at the grand finale in Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh. Aseto Zhao and Vizotulo Shijoy were adjudged as the first runner-up and Sangshila Sangtam as second runner-up. Altogether, five models represented Nagaland at the event. The contestants were selected in an audition conducted by the Nagaland Mega Entertainment. That's all we have for now. Keep watching Hornbill TV.